Righty guys and welcome back in. We're going to be taking another closer look into Oni and what I recommend and what I've seen a lot of people run. Now being a rank 1 player, I've ran into quite a few Onis based on the fact I do put him in the top 5 best killers in Dead by Daylight, even without add-ons. Now that being said, we're going to go quickly over what I currently have selected on the screen. Now currently this is the most meta Oni build that you're going to see generally in a lot of the rank 1 games. Now there are variations, obviously using Corrupt, using Ruin, Surveillance, even the new Tinkerer that got a bit of a buff. But let's go through what we got here. Now, what do we know about Oni? Just from start off with, here's his basic kit. He comes with Zanzin Tactic. He comes with Blood Echo and Nemesis. Nemesis being one of the best perks in the game to stack with Play With Your Food, if that is a combo that you are going for. Blood Echo working on killers like Hag, but not very being able to be utilized efficiently and effectively. Also works well on somebody like a Nurse or even a Ghostface if you have consist consistency on injured targets through Sloppy Butcher. Wouldn't recommend it on any of them, though. But still, moving on to Zanzin Tactic, it's basically the killer version of... Windows of Opportunity for Survivors, just to help the killer out. Now that being said, what what do we know about Oni? Oni is a 115% move speed killer in Dead by Daylight. He has no ability that can be powered until he hits a survivor. When Oni hits a survivor with his sword that you can see over his shoulder, he will build his, uh, his fury. Okay, when a survivor is hit, they will leave blood on the ground and it will give Oni 45% of his ability for his actual power. Now, if he hits the same survivor that was not currently injured, he will get nothing out of it. For him to hit a full health survivor is when he gets the 45%. When Oni has fully built up his ability. So while a survivor is injured, they'll be leaving blood on the ground. They'll also be leaving blood orbs. Blood orbs Oni can see and a su survivor can see blood orbs when they initially drop. Unless he has his ultra rare add-on, survivors cannot see their own blood orbs. Uh, when they're on the ground, they'll disappear for them, but they will remain there for the entire trial. Oni can walk over and kind of suck the blood orbs into his hand. When he's fully enraged, you will hear a drum sound. You will also see his hand will be glowing red. Oni will then be able to push the control key. He will scream. He'll put his sword away and he'll pull this very large hammer off of his back, which we can kind of see there. With this hammer, he's now going to be able to dash at 195% movement speed with no penalty towards collision. Now, in hindsight, the hillbilly is 230%, both prior to nerf and after his rework. I wouldn't really call it a nerf, it's a bit of a rework. Now, that also being said, he's 195% movement speed. He has no penalty for collision. He can turn incredibly well, and he can also flick almost 180 degrees with a multi-hit instant down dash. Yes, that's a mouthful, and he's very powerful with it. So you're going to notice a lot of people will be running Infectious Fright on their Oni. That being said, his ability lasts 45 seconds. If he is to pick up a survivor from Dying State, grab a survivor out of a locker, these things turn off his ability. However, being pallet stunned does not turn off his ability like a plague while she has her vile emit, or however you want to refer to it, as active. So you can pallet stun an Oni, and he won't lose his ability. Now, when he holds M1 while he has his hammer out, he has the longest lunge in the game. That being said, it is a multi-hit instant down, keeping that in mind. All he has to do is hold his button for a little, about one second, and that will instantly down a survivor in full health, as opposed to if he taps it, it'll just do one stage of damage as well. When he has a sword up, he has no formal lethality and cannot down a survivor in one hit. That also being surged, da uh, surge. That also being said, downing a survivor with your special ability out, your hammer, even though it counts as an M1, does not apply to things like surge, so just keep that in mind also. Now let's have a closer look at Oni's build. That's basically how Oni works. When he runs out of his power, he'll, you know, make a sad sound like, oh, I'm out of ability. And then he'll look at the ground, and then he'll be able to draw blood again from different locations. A survivor that is slugged on the ground will no longer leave blood. Survivor on the hook will no longer leave blood. Survivor crouch walking will leave a little bit more blood. Keeping that in mind as well. The abilities that I currently have here is Modern Abuse. Modern Abuse reduces this killer's terror radius from 32 meters down to 24 meters until he enters chase. When he enters chase and he downs a survivor, that'll help proc Infectious Fright at a much larger radius. Now, the next perk is Barbecue and Chili. Barbecue and Chili, so when you hook a survivor and you activate your ability, you know exactly where you're going to be dashing to. Therefore, you can get the most value out of your ability. Next one is going to be Pop, because you know where you're going for your stability and your aggression throughout the game. Now, some people would recommend trading out Modern Abuse for Corrupt Dimension, and depending on your comfortability on Oni being able to snowball and one of the best snowballers in the game. Um, I would agree with taking out a corrupt for monitor. Monitor does help a lot though, don't get me wrong. However, the extra range will help you use your ability to go for more snowball plays as well. Keeping in mind that Knockout did get a bit of a rework and Knockout will not activate off your special ability. It'll 
when you're enraged and you have the hammer out, you will have to M1 somebody down with your katana out. So just keep these things in mind. It, it was a little bit of a, a rework, so a lot of people aren't running knockout on Oni anymore. And the final perk is Infectious Fright, which is when you put a survivor in a dying state, doesn't matter how, whether you put them into dying state through a projectile being a Huntress's hatchet, it's all based off around you. Your terror radius around you uh, will basically make people scream. You have a very small terror radius, not many people are going to scream far away. If you have a very large terror radius like a distressing doctor, then everybody far away will scream and that will stack with your static blast and obviously calm add-ons as well. So Infectious Fright is good because Oni will have a 32 meter terror radius. He'll down somebody. If he does have modern abuse active, might be a bit la uh, larger than that as well. He will be able to see people scream and then he'll dash across. Remember, 195% movement speed. He's about a 2.5 second activation time now if we have a proper look at his ability he has two abilities he has his lunge where he pulls his hammer above his head and does a multi smash on the ground then you have his dash when he dashes and hits the survivor as well he can do those crazy curves that i was referring to as well so keeping in mind oni is one of the stronger killers in my opinion when you know how to work him now how do you play against oni you do this is probably one of the only killers in dead by daylight i recommend giving a pallet to early that comes into subject with what pallet are you giving him if I had to choose between giving him the God Palette and taking a hit in the first 10 seconds, the answer to that would be, is the basement beside the God Palette? If it is, I wouldn't give it to him. If it wasn't, and it was just the shack, I would give it to him. That just goes to show you how much this killer can snowball off one hit. If you hit the survivor once, remember they're going to constantly be dropping blood until they're healed. Yes, some people do run Sloppy Butcher with that. That being said, Oni is very loud with his running and his like raw kind of sound he makes. Therefore, running Tinkerer on him, he can still be heard coming a mile away because of all the stomping, much like Demogorgon. People do recommend Tinkerer after it's buffed from 85% down to 70%. Therefore, you can get to Jennies in time. That just helps killers like Clown get around the map a lot easier with their Tinkerer because they'll be able to get there before the generator pops. But it also enhances killers like this and people like Freddy Krueger as well. Now, that being said... There's some honourable mentions to point out about Oni. These two add-ons that I do have on him, I personally think are his best two add-ons available in the game. And this is going to increase how fast he runs. So instead of running at 195% movement speed, he'll be moving considerably faster. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. That being said, the next one is going to be how quickly he activates his um, dashes, which can be very devastating, and his... Um, initial fury roar so it can be very scary to verse those two other honorable mentions this is what i was refer to referring to a little while ago this is basically all survivors can see their blood orbs but when they move through them their aura is revealed to the killer now this is pretty much infectious fright but a lot smaller so while blood fury is active where he's enraged for 45 seconds uh missing a demon strike will cause all survivors within 12 meters to scream revealing their location scream bubbles much like um infectious fright or the doctor making somebody madness up now all in all Infectious is much better than these kind of options. You can run quite a diff quite a lot of different choices on Oni, but this is where I come in and say, hey, this is what a lot of people run, and it works really well. Remember, Corrupt Intervention is an option. You can run Thrilling Tremor, depending on how you want to play. Unfortunately, Surge gets near no value out of Oni, so that is one of the cases I would walk away from Surge. However, Discordance does get good value if you can replace your barbecue with Discordance and you understand map movement. Keeping in mind, remember how when I told you Oni, when he picks up a survivor, uh, his ability cancels? If his ability lasts 45 seconds, so if he's used 20 seconds of his 45 seconds and then he hooks somebody, he cannot reactivate his ability until the bar is full. However, the bar does not go down from where it was. Unlike Legion, who's, you know, Feral Frenzy has to start from the bottom, his doesn't, oh, unless Legion cancels his ability as well. That was a bad example. So keeping in mind that he will always need his ability fully enraged and his hand will be glowing and you'll hear that drum sound when he can activate his ability. So that Oni is one of the scariest killers in my opinion to verse in Dead by Daylight. He can do incredible curves and incredible hits and you're always going to be like, wow. There's no real safe loops against Oni. I recommend playing Windows, blocking his line of sight as well. Now, unfortunately, Oni can still see scratch marks. Unlike Legion, when Legion activates their ability, they can't see scratch marks, but Oni can. Um, Oni cannot see blood orbs while he is, has his ability activated. So if you're leaving blood in one area and you're hiding with Iron Will and he activates his ability, he won't be able to see the blood clustered in one area and know that you're around there. He has to be within approximately six to seven meters to see blood around as well. So it's not like he can see all these dots around the board. But if he's walking and he sees a cluster of blood in front of a locker, he's probably going to go into the assumption you got in the locker and then be able to play around that if he doesn't have his ability activated as well. Now that's a quick rundown on Oni. What I recommend, like I said, guys, I easily put him in the top five best killers in the game in terms of no add-ons with add-ons he's still a devastating weapon i rate him a little higher than the huntress based on the fact that oni can work on any map but the huntress suffers you know phenomenally on some maps i still think the huntress is very good don't get me wrong but this is based off no add-ons as well and if we were incorporating add-ons the question would be well, are we incorporating pink and purple or just 
green and below. Anyways, guys, this is going to be your informative educational video on Oni for anyone who has any questions about it. Hope uh, this answers the questions. But guys, don't hesitate to pop into live streams. I do stream DVD five days a week over at uh, Twitch. So make sure you slap that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the fog in the next video.